Welcome, beloved graduates, staff, leadership team, and alumni. Now that we're all present, let's get the party started. This evening, we'll have the opportunity to celebrate the accomplishment and success of these passionate youth at TJS who never let a chance opportunity to go to West Waste at TJS. So let's welcome all of you guys, and we're so happy to see you here. From meeting some friendly hippos in Botswana to presenting a showcase at a World Expo, our graduates have seen it all. Away from forced mass meets on Zoom and questionable virtual backgrounds, it feels great to celebrate a very special moment with loved ones right on your side. I'm personally impressed with ability of Michelle to mimic a mermaid. <laughs> we all welcome Miss Joanne McPike for creating this opportunity for a lot of change makers to come together and follow their passion. Thank you. Okay, I should probably take these off so I can see you all. Oh my God, you're sweltering. <laughs> uh, next year, can we provide um, TGS sun hats? I think. <laughs> so, welcome to the graduation of Think Global Schools class of 2022. And to the classes of 2020 and 2021, welcome to your first reunion. Once again, I stand up here humbled. Symposium yesterday was amazing. Each one of you is so much more than I could have ever imagined when I first started TGS. What a challenge the last two years have been, not just for each one of us individually, not just for TGS as a school, but for the entire world. So first of all, I'd like to thank the board, Mark, Lisa, James and Harry, and all the educators and staff that kept our little community afloat. So I'd like you all to please stand. Adnan, Russ, Vanessa, our amazing leadership team, Lily, Heather, Lee, Melanie, Colleen, Mary, Tashi, Ariel, Scott, Anita, Hannah, Fulami, our off-site staff, Samuel, Terence, Ibrahim, Amethyst, Shasta, Michelle, Jack, Riley, Michelle, and Maria Vega from CM1, Chung Man, Andy, Ebony, Dan, Angela, Sharika, Christine, Rachel, Sophie, Matt, and Christopher from CM2. Please stand. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You all really stepped up to the plate and took a school that defined itself by travel and made it work not only lockdown in our countries, but lockdown in our homes. You continue to provide an incredible education for these eager young minds, and you did so with enthusiasm, dedication, and passion. You did not just educate. You provided emotional support, encouragement, and comfort, and not just to your students, to their parents as well. A community can only be defined as strong as its weakest link. It is bound together by trust, hope, compassion, and the knowledge that we only grow stronger if we work together, each one of us doing our best and supporting those who are struggling. So thank you, all of you, for being the glue that held us together during our most challenging time and for showing us that we're more than just a traveling school. We're an adaptable, resilient, ever-learning community that comes together with support and love. So can we give another big round of applause to these amazing educators and our off-site staff? I really appreciate it. You guys can all sit down. There are, and there are so many new faces here that I, haven't, that I haven't seen and met. So I look forward to meeting you all over the next year. Um, Russ and Chung Man, you're off to start our new PD centre and Shell is becoming new head of school of cohort two and so these are exciting times. Um, that all being said, thank goodness we can travel again. Yes. But what a world we are travelling in right now. It feels like it's being pulled apart at the seams. A horrific war in Ukraine, climate crisis, Racism, sexism, the murder of teachers and children in a school in America, a decisiveness in politics the world over that seems to be pulling people further and further apart. An addiction to social media, an algorithm that leads you into an echo chamber and the isolation of your own beliefs. A mental health crisis like the world has never seen and COVID that is still lurking. It's a confusing time. If you read the news, it can feel like it's all tumbling, tumbling down around us and we're powerless to do anything about it. 
As connected as we are, we have never felt more isolated and lonely. Deep down, we all yearn for a sense of connectedness and safety. It feels like we're surrounded by fear, anguish, desperation, anger, and frustration from all sides. It feels like it's us versus them. That's what they want you to believe. But is that the truth? Does no one care? Are we really alone in how we feel? Or do we just think we are? So I just finished reading a book called Collective Illusions by my good friend Todd Rose. Honestly, it has literally changed the how I view a lot of things. The basic premise is that we think we're in the minority about how we feel about certain things that are important to us, but actually we're in the majority. So here are the three biggest collective illusions that I just found fascinating. First one, the illusion of fame. We think that most other people rate it as one of the most important things in a successful life. In reality, it's dead last. So don't chase it because you think you're supposed to. It may not bring you the happiness you expect. The second one is the illusion of zero sum. The overwhelming majority of people actually want to live their lives in a win-win way, and they don't believe that someone else has to lose for them to win. But they incorrectly think that most everyone else around them disagrees, that for me to win, someone else has to lose. And as a result, they end up behaving like that, and then the world, that the world is win-lose, and then this makes it true. And the third one, and this one is probably the biggest one for me, is the illusion of trust. Most people care about being trusted and see themselves as deeply trustworthy people, worthy of being believed in. But they think that the majority of other people don't trust or believe in other people. And so we wrongly treat one another as if we can't be trusted. And that choice, again, makes it true. So work hard and don't fall for that illusion. Trust people like you want them to trust you. You can choose to trust and believe in people. And that's the choice that can change the world. And the reason why it affected me so much was because I really felt like I was fighting an uphill battle in creating transformation and education in the world. Maybe there were a few other brave souls like me, but we were the minority. But we're not. We're the majority. We just have to tell each other what we care about. Stepping out of the crowd and speaking up or behaving differently can be the scariest thing. No one wants to risk social isolation. It's one of our worst fears. But it just takes one or two brave people to speak their truth, to allow others to also speak their truth. And that's when the collective illusions begin to crumble. So here's my challenge to all of you. First, never conform. Never forget your time at TGS, the magic you have encountered here, the open-mindedness, the ability to listen and to have conversations with people of opposing views, the celebration of diversity, the acceptance of each person's individuality, and at the same time, the importance of community and your place in it. Take the TGS values and intertwine them into everything you do in life, every choice you make. Create your own metric of success. You will only know you, you will only know where your happiness can be found. Be careful about falling into the illusion that the crowd's idea of success will bring you happiness. I know for a fact that that is wrong. Remember to talk to everyone you meet about what you truly believe, your hopes, your dreams. Be honest and brave about what is fundamentally important to you. Be kind and gentle. They will follow your example, and you may be, you may be surprised with who opens up and agrees with you. And secondly, never stop imagining what if. Keep in, the front of the keep in the front of your mind the kind of world you want to live in. What does it look like? What does it smell like? What does it feel like? How do people behave towards one another? This will affect the choices you make in your everyday life. I see the love of life in each one of you. I see the optimism, the possibility that fills you. Never lose that. Never let anyone take that away from you. And this is incredibly important because without an imagination of a future in which we and the planet are flourishing, we have no guiding light to follow. This isn't hope. This isn't idealism. This is the first step in driving change. 
You've not only got to know what you're aiming for, but you have to believe it is possible and to know and trust that everyone else believes it as well. Imagine living in a world where everyone believes that if you win, I do too. Collaboration, not competition. Where we uplift each other instead of trying to pull down each other. Imagine a world where we all understand that without a flourishing earth, human beings cannot and will not flourish. Imagine the choices we are making when we work together in communities, trusting that each is doing their best, knowing that our choices matter. Imagine a world that is ruled by love and not fear. I know for a fact that each and every one of you wants this. But did you know that the person next to you wants it as well? That the person down the street, the person who votes a different way to you, the person of a different religion, they do. Even those you think is diametrically different to you, they're not. Deep down, we all want the same things. We want to feel safe, to have opportunities, and to be the best versions of ourselves, and to feel loved and appreciated. So continue to be that person that you are today, the curious, creative sparks who are finding solutions to real world challenges. Continue to speak up and speak out for a gentler, kinder world. Continue to be the voices of hope, of possibility. Leave the space of what is and choose to live in the space of what if. It's scary, it's challenging. People may ridicule you and tell you to be realistic because they're too scared to dream themselves because they've lost hope. But deep down, it's what they want themselves. So don't be crushed by the cynicism. Continue to be optimistic, continue being the light, and continue being the visionaries, because, in, because it's in your imagination. That's where your curiosity and your creativity lives, your ingenuity and your potential. And I absolutely believe in you. No more than that, I believe in us, because we can't do this together. So congratulations to the classes of 2020, 2021, and 2022. I'm so proud of you all. All right.